Trump's team is hinting at his presence on the court next Thursday in Fulton County. But the judge has not ruled yet if Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and her top prosecutor, Nathan Wade will testify in the hearing set to disqualify them from the RICO case. On Monday, the judge was unequivocal on their potential disqualification. It's clear that disqualification can occur if evidence is produced demonstrating an actual conflict or the appearance of During the hearing and in public opinion, a single factor is deemed to determine the likelihood of the Fonnie Willis-Nathan Wade fate, the timeline of their intimate relationship. In response to the initial court order, Willis criticized Roman's lawyers for subpoenaing herself, Wade, and others on the prosecution team. She called it a ticket to the circus and accused the lawyers of trying to gain more media coverage and invade the personal lives of the prosecution team to embarrass and harass the district attorney personally. Anna Cross, Fulton County DA lawyer, asserted on Monday that the defense is bringing only gossip. They know there is an attorney-client relationship privilege between Mr. Wade and Mr. Bradley, and that there has been no waiver of that privilege. That privilege will be invoked. The defense counsel's motion is designed to obtain more public relations, more spectacle, she added. On Thursday, Judge Scott McAfee will hold a hearing regarding Fonnie Willis's disqualification. The question is, will the outcome depend on the testimony of Terence Bradley, a lawyer and former business partner of Nathan Wade, and John C. Floyd III, who is Fonnie Willis's father. Floyd is expected to testify, from Florida, that there was no intimate relationship between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade during his stay in Willis's residence. However, Terence Bradley claims to know about such a relationship during the same period. This information comes from Ashley Marchant, who is Mike Roman's lawyer. The outcome of Thursday's hearing before Judge Scott McAfee regarding the potential disqualification of Fonnie Willis may indeed hinge on the testimony of attorney Bradley, a former lawyer and business partner of Nathan Wade, as well as Mr. Floyd, D.A. Willis' father. Mr. Floyd's testimony regarding the asserted absence of an intimate relationship between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade during Floyd and supposedly Wade's stay in Willis' residence is of particular significance. If Mr. Floyd denies the existence of such a relationship, it could potentially undermine any allegations of bias or conflict of interest on Willis' part stemming from her alleged personal connection with Wade. On the other hand, Terence Bradley's alleged awareness of the supposed relationship could provide critical evidence supporting the motion for disqualification. If Bradley confirms the existence of an intimate relationship between Willis and Wade with evidence, it could raise serious questions about Willis' impartiality and integrity in prosecuting the case against Donald Trump and his co-conspirators. Ultimately, Judge McAfee will weigh the testimonies and evidence presented during the hearing to determine whether there are sufficient grounds to disqualify Fonnie Willis from her role in the Georgia indictment against Trump. The credibility and reliability of the witnesses, including Mr. Floyd and Terrence Bradley, will play a crucial role in shaping the judge's decision and the subsequent direction of the legal proceedings. The allegation made by Michael Roman's attorney, Ashley Marchin, regarding Nathan Wade's residence in Fonnie Willis's residence paid by Fulton County, under the premise of friendship rather than an intimate partnership, is indeed critical to the proceedings. And when we say the relationship, are we, are we referring to just the fact that they knew each other or that they knew that it, it changed or evolved? That it was, that, that the relationship predated Mr. Wade being hired as special counsel. And what aspect of the relationship? That their relationship was romantic, Judge, I'm sorry. This allegation speaks directly to the nature of the relationship between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade and the potential conflicts of interest that may arise from it. If it can be convincingly demonstrated that Wade resided in Willis's residence as a friend rather than a romantic partner, it could undermine the arguments for disqualification based on allegations of personal bias or favoritism towards him. It is also known that different high-profile lawyers were consulted for the position of a special prosecutor and turned it down, including Mr. Gabe Banks, a friend of Mr. Terrence Bradley who is also subpoenaed as a witness in this case. Nonetheless, the veracity of this claim will likely be subject to scrutiny during the hearing. Evidence such as financial records, witness testimony, and any other relevant documentation may be presented to corroborate or refute Marchant's assertion. The judge will carefully assess the credibility and weight of this evidence in determining its impact on the case and whether it affects the eligibility of Fonnie Willis to continue prosecuting the indictment against Donald Trump and his co-conspirators. In summary, Marchant's allegation regarding the nature of Nathan Wade's residence in Fonnie Willis's home adds another layer of complexity to the proceedings and will be crucial in shaping the outcome of the hearing and its implications for the ongoing legal proceedings. Thanks for watching. If you like it, comment and hit the like and share buttons. Subscribe for future videos.